<laughs> All right, we're recording. Hello. Hey, everybody. Michelle and Amy are back. And yeah, we're on track. We filmed an episode last week. Now we're filming one this week. That means that, you know, we're not going to accidentally take a three month break, perhaps. <laughs> Well, but um, this was a special occasion. First trimester is, it, it doesn't happen that often. So yeah, I think that's, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I asked in the Passive Income and Printable Facebook group, any questions people had. So we got three in. We're mm -hmm. going to try to answer those quickly so that uh, Amy and I can switch gears and work on something else after this call. But we wanted to make sure we got the show in. So that is why we're going to try to be concise. And <laughs> we're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Our idea of concise is like 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we're going to dive in with Diane's question. And I think I got it ready on my iPad. All right, Diane asked, what info do you keep in your planners? I'm working on organizing my planner, my paper planner with the information and tabs I need to be productive. Right now it's a bit cluttered with, with too much stuff going on, go figure. My goal is to have it organized by the, end, by the beginning of the year. Um, so Amy and I both have our methods and for me it starts with the fact that i'm actually very fluid about how i plan so i don't have like one system and i'm using it all the time throughout the year only one way only one planner i can change week by week because i might feel more like planning my day on paper at one point or planning my day in my digital ipad planner or planning my day in uh, a digital, uh, my, like Trello, like one of those digital, digital planning platforms. Mm -hmm. And I still get things done. I still know where things are at. I still know what I'm doing because I have already figured, I've already planned out what I want to achieve this month. I already know what I want the year to look like. And so when it comes to the day to day, granular planning it's just up to what I feel like if I'm really really busy I might be on a digital platform like Trello so that I can like see everything and tie it in with my calendar tie it in with my Asana projects that I have with my client and just have everything you know on my computer because when I sit down to work I'm at my computer and being able to like go into projects and files and tasks and other people working with things and commenting like that starts to get like that's my life because I have an online business and I work with other people but for other other times when I can be more simple and laid back I'll plan on paper I'll use my digital planner because it doesn't really matter if things get lost with that because it's just kind of like me getting my brain out on paper um, so I was going to show what I'm doing right now. I told Amy, I work, I woke up, um, earlier this week and <laughs> it's just going to sound like terrible to some people, <laughs> but I woke up at one o'clock in the morning and I was like, the office is calling me. I must get it. <laughs> <laughs> Who hears that voice at one in the morning? Forever. <laughs> My intuition wakes me up. It might be because I'm a mom and I'm like, oh, the baby's sleeping and I'm awake. Ooh, mm. this is fun. So I'll yes. go. And working is fun for me because I do stuff I love to do. And so I came into the office and what's going on for me this month is I have a lot going on. We're going to go on a trip and we have. Uh, the launch coming up for the SOS Club. I have my client uh, magazine that I create. I, we have the magazine for the Planner Girl magazine coming up. So I have to make sure I'm doing things on time and not like trying to keep it all in my head. So the mm -hmm. other day we went to Home Depot and I picked up this roll of paper and I spread it out on my that one o'clock in the morning, I spread it out on my desk and I planned out the next two weeks, like as a timeline. And then I was like, okay, this is good. And then I ended up on Aura, which is like Trello. So I use a platform called Aura and I'll show it to you. And I took what was on the paper and put it on to my Aura so that I could 
plan things on my computer and it's not just on paper because I need it to be able to move around and be fluid and dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to share my screen and show you guys really quickly what that looks like. Share screen. Okay, so this is Aura. And it's very cute. Thank you. It's so much prettier than Trello. Uh, yeah, I like, I like it more than Trello. Um, so I put 2019 quarter four in here. Mm -hmm. And so I have, um, right now I ha we're on December. So I have my goals for December and then I broke it up into different weeks and then tasks for each week. And then I have the current week. So I'm only looking at one week at a time. But if I have things come up that are for next week or the week after, they can go in this list for later. But I only, I'm only looking at one week at a time. So I have all of these cards with tasks underneath them for each day of the week. And then I have my 2020 goals. And then I have the different quarters of 2020 for if I want to move things even further down the timeline. But what I like about this is I can go to list view if it'll let me. And this was for yesterday, so I need to clean things up. I need to move some stuff to today. And you'll notice that I have these tags. So if I have a lot of things on my plate, I learned this from someone who works with us in Team FEA, the Female Entrepreneur Association, where she says to organize your tasks by energy level. Mm, I love that. So I can work according to energy level. Maybe I'll wake up and I'll feel like I can get the most high energy thing done right now. Or I'll wake up at a little bit tired and be like, I need to just knock out the low energy stuff because if I start with the high energy stuff, I'm going to be zapped and I won't be able to do anything else. Mm -hmm. So I can see everything for one day in this list. And I can click around to different days if I wanted to or different cards if I wanted to. But seeing it like this allows me to see it for just in one space without getting overwhelmed. And mm, I like I, that it's just for the day. You don't see yeah. any other tasks and it's just this one list on the board. Exactly. And I can track things. I find that when I track myself, I don't take as long. Mm. Um, How do you track it? What do you, what is that? How does that work? There's a, there's a little play button right here. Oh, and Aura tracks you? Yes. So That's the tracker is cool. built in and then it tells you, try this. yeah, it tells you on the right side over here, how much time things, how much time you've spent on things. And, um, so you'll notice that there's some things here that, um, well, this is for yesterday. So some things yesterday did not get done. So what I do is I move those things over. So this is kind of like digital sticky notes, being mm -hmm. able to fluidly move your tasks around is what keeps things from getting off track. So mm -hmm. I wanted to check my email yesterday. I didn't do that. So I need to move that over to today. Uh, we, ho we did host our Facebook live in the SOS club. So let me go ahead and check that off. We did. Uh, we did not so record fun. our Michelle and Amy show. That's today. So I'm moving that over today. Um, I did not send the magazine link to Carrie. I decided that it makes more sense to do that on Monday. So I'm going to put that over here. And I did not record a Facebook Live for the printable group yet, but I definitely want to do that today. I did finish a big part of the FEA magazine. So I'm going to, clean, I'm going to finish that. We are doing the self in the living room. So I'm going to put that today. Um, so that's what today looks like. And being able to move things around is what makes this work when you're really busy because if you're mm. when you're using a paper planner unless you're using the sticky note system that amy's going to show you um you have to keep rewriting things if you don't get it done and mm. i don't have time to rewrite <laughs> if i'm really trying to get things done i like to just be able to like broop, broop, drop it over to the next day and so that's what it looks like for me right now now i can just open up the list view and see my tasks for today and I can um, adjust the due date here because now it's for today and not yesterday. So this synchronizes with my Google Calendar and yeah, 
it will show up there as well. Very good. So that's me. I'm going to put this in place right after this. Talk. <laughs> so what I love about this is how you're able to get granular with your week. Mm -hmm. So the way that we work is actually quite similar, but I'm not using these digital tools yet. I'm using my paper planner and then notebooks for like tasks, which I then mm -hmm. refer back to. And uh, it's just been because I feel very comfortable working in a notebook and writing out to-do lists and kind of moving things around and crossing things out. I like yeah. Yeah. Well, last, last month I was just using my digital planner. I wasn't using Aura. And um, so like this is an example of me planning out. Yeah. My notebook looks <laughs> like that. Yeah, and <laughs> I'll plan out all the things I want to do in November and I'll refer back to it or December, yeah, November and refer back to it and just check things off. And even without me trying to be like, am I doing everything? It's mm. just like I set the intention, I'm I get it I get it out on paper and then whatever is not done by the end of the month, it's usually because I need to sit with it a little bit more, talk to somebody, change or adjust it, but I'm looking at my November list and I completed everything with uh, an extra few days tacked on the end. There was one thing in here that was redo the SOS club sales page. And I just finished that today. So some things are more of a process, but you set your intention and you decide at the end of the month, if it's something you still want to do, or if you just threw it on there because you're making a list. Mm -hmm. So I was just using digital, all my digital iPad, planner all last month and that's what served me well and obviously it worked because I checked my goals off so it's not like oh do it this way and it'll work it's listen to your intuition be fluid and do what works for you and that can change on a month-to-month -month basis or week-to-week -week basis mm -hmm. like yes, don't get, I think don't get hung up if you can't stick to one way no, but I think the big thing to take away is the fluidity, is that yeah. you can move things around from day to day. And I think Aura looks like a really great way to do that. Um, mm -hmm. because, because that is more fluid than a notebook, than like mm -hmm. having to go back and like rewrite things and scribble them out and stuff. So, okay. So the way that I work, I have my planner here. It's just folded up in my smaller notebook. I have transitioned to a mini notebook now is I do sort of monthly planning. At and the it's beginning. so beautiful. It's pretty. <laughs> All the colors. <laughs> so I do my monthly planning at the beginning of the month. And what that looks like is like printing out my calendar, which is split up into week by week. So I'm like looking at week one, two, three, four. And I just, I just write my goals wherever I want to on this page. <laughs> and, then, and then what I do is I get everything down that I think I might want to do and then some like because I have many many things that I want to do and I just in this stage I don't stop myself I just allow myself to put it all down on paper and then look at it and then I start transferring onto these mini post-its little kind of like half mm -hmm. post-its they're not even mm -hmm. half post-its they're just I don't know I think that they're used for like tabs in books to put to mark things but I use them for my calendar. So I start transferring all these things down onto mini post-its. And then I look at the space on my calendar and think, okay, where can this fit in? How does this work? Um, I have a picture of a previous calendar that I can show you in, because I've just written about this. Let me share my screen. Okay, so this was my October calendar. And as and you can it's see, it's so cute. It's cute. The days Look at off. The cats. Are, those are the, <laughs> the days off, the black cats. They're like ah. <laughs> the rest moment. Um, take a cat day. Take a kitty day. <laughs> and as you can see, what's nice about using these digital post its is that I can only really fit like two on a day, which for me is a bit more realistic. Um, mm -hmm the post-its tend to be split up into like stages of a project. They're not like granular mini, mini tasks. They're sort of stages of things that I would like to get done. Like, um, I don't know if you can see here, but like SOS record coaching session. 
and that could be split up into a few different things but it's it's like a stage of a project and that goes mm -hmm. onto its own space and that way i can see time physically as like a in, like visually i can see it there in front of me as an almost like a map and mm -hmm. i don't i don't feel like i have endless endless time but then the days become really real yeah and then from there i do something very similar to what michelle does but in my notebook so the system here I would recommend is approach the month week by week. This way we're not looking at the month as a giant block of time, but week long stretches. Use mini post-it notes to move things around, kind of like Michelle's aura boards. And then check in every day to move the tasks around or remove them all together. So this is actually something I want to talk about. I tend to put a lot of things down and then take them off as the month goes on. Mm -hmm. It helps me to kind of just focus in as I'm checking in every day and being like, okay, is this as important as I thought it was? Maybe not. I'm going to remove it. Like what really matters for the, to move these projects forward before the end of the month. And mm -hmm. by the end, I've removed half of them, but I don't feel bad about that. I feel like, okay, well, I actually got the important things done. So I'm like sort of practicing, trusting that I'm going to figure out what's important. Mm -hmm. And I found that I've got like 10 times more done using this system than not using any system at all. Just like waking up and deciding what to do. It doesn't mm -hmm. really work for me. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. And this, by the way, is a freebie, a free gift that I created for my customers in my store. It's a November and December calendar. November is not valid anymore. It's gone, but maybe December still. So yeah, if you, if you want to get a copy of a December calendar to make the most of the last couple of weeks, and then also to find out, to, to read into the mindset behind this way of planning and also some steps that I would recommend, then um, I'll put a link under the video. I love it. Yeah. So cute. We got some I love the colors. Here. I love See? it. Okay. I think I down I think I downloaded this for myself, but if I forgot where I put it, I need you to resend it to me, Amy. <laughs> you definitely did because you purchased something last month. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. I'm one of Amy's best customers. <laughs> you are. Who one of my first customers too. Um, so yeah, you can get let me let's go down to December. I'll show you what's in December. So you've got your December calendar. We still have a couple of weeks left to use this, uh, this space. And then you've got things like a page to remember things, your to do's, your intentions. Mm. Love it. Love it. Stuff. So, yeah, if you, if, if a person were to fill this out at the beginning of the month, you'd be so much more in tune. I think that's it. It's just, I, I find the important thing is, the monthly planning at the beginning to get a mm -hmm. sense of what are the important projects I want to move forward. Yeah. I feel like that just is, like break it down into weeks. Yeah. Then, that is like 80% of what you're trying to like get in place for you to be productive. Like uh -huh. me putting down my November um, goals, I Woke up early in the morning, I made my coffee, walked out to the fountain outside, sat down, and I wrote this. Mm. So it was like, I, it's like an honorable event. It's not like, oh, it, maybe I'll write it or forget about it. Like, I know I have to do it. Otherwise, the month is 10 times slower and harder. And it's like, what happened? Where did the November go? Yeah. So it's like that, taking that time in the beginning of the month it kind of makes it so that you are opening yourself to magical productivity without really, 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 really trying to be productive. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's sharpening your ax. So yeah, um, that's that if you're feeling like, Oh my gosh, I keep planning and trying and doing, and I'm still not making any progress. It's probably because you need to take that time in the beginning of the month to just sit with yourself, set your intentions, look mm. at what you really want to do. Yeah, think like what, what would feel really good to get done or to see come to life at the end of this month? Yeah. Like 
a little bit challenging, but not so overwhelming that it's going to, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're setting yourself up to fail tomorrow. And mm -hmm. then the daily check-in to just be flexible and adjust and kind of go, oh, that's not important anymore. Take that off. Yes, it's the ability to adapt that um, keeps, keeps ener the energy moving. Mm -hmm. um, then, okay, so the next question is from, I believe it's Stephanie. Let me open Facebook. These will be quicker to answer. So Steph said, I'd love it if you could have a chat about what's worked and what hasn't on Pinterest. So this is great because I was just telling Amy what's been working lately for me on Pinterest. And I shared a little bit about this in the Passive Income and Printable group. I made a little video um, where I showed how I made this free printable that I make every year. I've made it for the past six years of uh, your, your New Year resolutions. It's right here. Um, so I make this every year. And oh, that's pretty. Oh, did you laminate it? No. No. It just has oh, that was just behind it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say that is organized. My God. <laughs> um, and then I put I put it up on my blog, and I wanted to drive more traffic to it, mm -hmm. and build a list of people for the Planner Girl Hub, so that we can those people will be there when the new magazine goes live. So I'm like connecting the dots. Okay, free printable. It's inside Planner Girl Hub. People will subscribe. And then when we create the third issue of Planner Girl Magazine, we have more, new people to email it to. So it's like, it's not just, here's a free printable. It's, this is a journey to getting more people to know about Planner Girl Magazine. And so the journey's there. And then to backtrack, it's like, okay, how do I have more people find this printable? I already know Pinterest works. How can I make it work better? Mm -hmm. So I made like 15 different styled pins for this printable. So they were different backgrounds, slightly different titles, slightly different descriptions. You know, the, um, just the way the pin looks can attract different people. And so I pinned them on Pinterest and so they link. You pinned them all to your printables board? Yes. So I have a board just for printables and I pinned them there. Mm -hmm. And then after a few days, I waited to see which pin would perform the best. Mm -hmm. and the one that performed the best was also kind of the most simple one. It was just a black background with this pin, with this picture of the printable on top and free printable for 2020 goals or something like that on the, mm -hmm. as the, as the headline. And that was performing better than the other ones like mm. i think it was maybe around 10 or 20 repins or clicks and the other ones were like zero one five like they were kind of slowly going along mm. and, so, and so i decided to promote that pin and i haven't really done pinterest ads before but I decided to promote the pin that was performing well. So if people are scared of Pinterest ads, I think it's because we just don't know if it's going to be worth it. Mm. But I think if you pin enough pins for the same product or the same customer journey strategy, then you, number one, know that you're actually trying to achieve a certain result. You're not just trying to get people to click on your pin and not know what you want to do with those people. Like I know what I want to do with the people who click on this pin. And number two is I tested out enough pins to know which one works best. I didn't just make one pin and throw it up there and start spending money advertising it. Mm -hmm. And so I set it to be $5 a day and, uh, and then I just let it do its thing. And that was a little over a week ago that I initially pinned the pin. And now it's between 300 and 400 clicks. So Wow, that's made such a difference. Yeah. And, and the, that's, and that's clicks. That's not clicks, not, not just repins. Like I want to, I count how many times people actually want to like go to the website. And mm -hmm. that has grown the list for Planet Girl Magazine by 20 people a day. So that's amazing. That, yeah, that, that's the strategy. That's what's working for me with Pinterest right now. Of course, there's more to do with Pinterest than just 
you know, this one thing I talked about, but Pinterest at the end of the day is really simple. And then you start to experiment and see what's working, what's not working. And from what I can tell, promoted pins are working really well for people. And I was kind of like, um, uh, like I never really tried it before, but now I'm trying it and I'm like, oh, now I have ideas for how I can promote this and promote that. And I think at the heart of it, it's about testing out a bunch of pins to begin with so that what you promote actually already is proving to get traction. Mm -hmm. All right. Amy, the, did you key add there, the key there is to have a sort of strategy before yeah. as opposed to just kind of promoting a pin and not knowing what you want to do with mm -hmm. the clicks once they click and where you're going to take them and yeah, there's yeah. two things that you want ha to have happen, traffic and conversion. So you don't want to just drive traffic and not convert anyone to a customer or subscriber. So when I put together this blog post, I must have tweet went back and tweaked it three or four times because I could see how I could make it better, how I can make it better. So first I put, put it together with the pin image on top and then the text on bottom and then the button on the bottom to go get the printable. And then I went back and was like, let me add a video. And then I went back and like, let me add an audio of me reading the blog post. And then I went back and like, let mm -hmm. me add an image of the Planner Girl Hub. So I was going back and like converting and making it a little bit better, a little bit better, so that when people actually go to it, it converts better. And it's not just people clicking on the pin, looking at it for five seconds, and then leaving the website. So mm -hmm. you want to, it's not just, you have to tweak everything. Everything mm -hmm. can constantly be tweaked and improved. Um, the next question was, do you think the 18 month, oh, this is from Kelly Lloyd, last question. Do you think the 18 month window still stands or is the tail longer now? And I love the show. Thank you both. Okay. So Kelly's talking about the 18, hey, month, 18 month J curve. And let me actually illustrate this. Um, new page. So the easiest thing to do is. Hold on, let me lock the screen so it stays landscape. Um, so what you do with the 18 month curve mm -hmm. is you realize that, can you see that Amy? Yeah. All right, so it's called the J curve. So when you decide to really commit to something, you're right here. And then you're putting in consistent effort and energy all along the way, month after month for 18 months. And then you get here and this is the 18 month mark. And all of a sudden, all that energy and work pays off. Mm. But while you're here, it feels like nothing's happening and you're doing all this work. And then you get here and it's like, whoa, everything's working, everything's happening, what happened? And that's- Well, everything is making sense as well. Yeah, everything As in like sense. ideas that you didn't know, like that you couldn't kind of, Put together suddenly click into place yeah and the reason they call it the j curve is because it looks like a j <laughs> um i first heard about this from jim Rohn. then i heard about it from um jeff olsen of the slight edge and i heard about it from darren hardy of compound effect and i have taught this in passive income of printables to let people to let people know that it takes 18 months to see real results mm. And that's been my story. That's been the story of people I work with. And that's, if you listen to like podcasts or read books where people are talking about their entrepreneurial journey, they're usually throwing out the term, oh yeah, 18 months later, blah, 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 blah. like everything changed. They, you always hear, if you're, you're now going to hear the term 18 months a lot because there's something about 18 months where it takes time. And that's like, you have to go through all these seasons to get to that, you know, harvest. Mm. And she, so she was asking if it's going to, if it's longer, the only thing that would make it longer is if you quit in mm. the middle. And I can't tell you what beautiful, amazing result you'll have at 18 months, but you will have a result if you stay consistent for 18 months. It might be that during the course of 18 months, you've gotten your store up, you're seeing sales, you're making money, but then at 18 months, you start to really make money. Or it might be that in the course of 18 months, you got your store up, 
And it feels like you keep working at it, but nothing's really happening. Other people are making more sales than you and they haven't been as, they haven't been open as long as you. And then you get to 18 months and you realize, you know, I haven't been making the kind of product I really want to make. And now I realize what I want to make and now I'm going to make it. And then I, and then you make it and then you start making tons of money. That's what happened to me. My first 18 months, I was making some sales here and there, but I was selling like $2 products, $3 products. And then at the end, uh, at the point, so that whole 18 months, I only made a thousand dollars on Etsy. And then at that 18 month mark, I realized what I really wanted to make. I made that. And then in the mm. next 18 months, I made $30,000 on Etsy. So 1,000 compared to 30,000, 18 months, and then another 18 months. It was a thousand over the course of 18 months, that first 18 months, right? Yeah, the first 18 months, $1,000. The second 18 months, $30,000. But the first 18 months were still important. It was still, I committed to opening an Etsy store at the beginning of the 18 months. So mm -hmm. First 18 months, I opened an Etsy store. Mm. I'm making some sales, I'm figuring out what it means to be an entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. And then I get here and I'm like, <gasps> I know what I want to really do now. And then I make the product and then things start happening. Mm. But I'm at another 18 months here. You still go through another 18 months. You're just 18 months after 18 months after 18 months. So I'm not at another 18 months, but at a higher level, right? And then it's, okay, I, I figured out what I really want to make. So let me focus on that, focus on that, focus on that. Oh, it's 18, another months day. Later, 18 months later, it's like $30,000. And then at that point... I made my, my passive income and printables course. So that was like the culmination result of the second 18 months was, oh, now I want to make a course. And then that led into like the launch of that course was like $10,000. And then that led into a mm. whole nother revenue stream. So it's like my business has been built 18 months after 18 months after 18 months. Mm -hmm. I look at my client who's a millionaire. Like I've watched her go from zero to millions. like. I've watched her and anytime she's had like a big breakthrough, I was like, you know, 18 months ago, you said yeah, that, <laughs> it's always was 18 months. So, um, I do believe it's always going to be 18 months, but I can't tell you what your result will be. And I can't tell you that if you give up and quit, like, like there's, well, there will be moments where you feel disheartened. You don't want to do anything and you don't feel inspired and you kind of take a break. Mm. That, that can still feed into your 18 month journey because needing to, to needing to step back, needing to take a break can still be part of the process that you go through for your mind to mm. get to the level it needs to be to give you the idea, the, 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 the up leveling, like everything's coming from your mind. It's not just what you're tactically doing on your keyboard, but if you totally quit, throw in the towel, give up, then yeah, you're going to have to start over. But if you're, mm. if you keep the faith, even if it gets hard, even if you need to rest, take a break, you know, sometimes the ideas come in the moments where you rest and you like honor what's going on inside more than what you're like actually doing physically in the tactile world. Like the inner work is just as important, if not more important than the, as the outer work. And it all feeds into those 18 months. Cause I'm not going to say like, I worked like a dog for 18 months. It's like, I just kind of like kept going like in my Etsy store and out of my Etsy store. I just kept going in life. And after 18 months, I got this result with my store. And then it kept happening that every 18 months I got a huge new result that would up level me. And it was always 18 months. So that's the 18 month story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it works. <laughs> I haven't kept track of whether things have been happening in 18 months. In Amy, we started the YouTube show 18 months ago. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did we? Oh, well then it, yeah, it's true. <laughs> because now we're at this stage where we're kind of, all the ideas are coming together. Yeah. We, becoming something amazing in SOS club. Yeah. We realized that the show was for our SOS community people. Oh. And now look at how we, we when we started the Amy Sell and Amy Show, we were not thinking about working together with SOS. Now we're like combined forces. Mm. And this show is totally 
what led to that. So 18 months later, Michelle and Amy combined forces after starting their YouTube show and relaunched the SOS Club. So yeah, <laughs> we just did the 18 month thing. Yeah, we did. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, and I would also say, so I have observed that having a level of consistency is, it really does lead to results. Like for, so it's difficult to say, will 18 months be the moment when everything takes off? Um, I think if there's a level of consistency inside that, then yes, right? Mm -hmm. But for instance, so I've definitely noticed that in my own business, results come when I'm able to put in some more consistent attention to yeah. making or updating products or making pins or, mm -hmm. or just, just giving it some attention. And in the times when I haven't, that's when things really kind of seem like they're falling flat. Mm -hmm. So, so 18 months, I think, yeah, there's a certain level of consistency along the way. Yeah. But in the times where you've kind of stepped back and the Etsy store kind of flatlined a little bit in terms of whether you were updating it or whatever, would you still say that those step back times were necessary for what you ended up creating when you came through it like with yeah. your Etsy store like did it still feed into your Etsy store because you went through those times well not even just the Etsy store it's like everything mm -hmm. <laughs> as in so those breaks are really important for clarity mm -hmm. for having a moment to to get out of burnout and just being generally unwell to heal mm -hmm. and then to come out of that with this renewed clarity of around an, a direction that I want to take yeah. or where I've been kind of off track with the things that I've been creating versus what I want to be creating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not just like, I find the clarity comes for something in the Etsy store, but then it also comes for like, other creative work and then it also comes for collaborations and then yeah, relationships. it's crazy and it's like it's everything yeah i was just telling amy how well in the sos club we went through this three month focus on decluttering for 2020 and one of my results from decluttering is it's given me the opportunity to look at my clean uncluttered space mm -hmm. and think okay now what oh i should decorate what's my style oh i'm kind of like into the bohemian earthy minimal look and like looking at my pinterest boards and wanting to bring them to life and then looking at youtube channels and consuming all this interior decorating stuff and then going to goodwill and buying stuff mm. to decorate with That's and really fun yeah check out my instagram stories <laughs> I'm like spray painting things gold and getting ready to hang stuff up on the wall um but then I realized, wow, this, this, this desire to create, to like, to, to bring out my interior decorating taste for bohemian, whatever, is feeding into my business because now I'm kind of doing that with my planners. Mm. I just finished making the new SOS sales page and I'm using these artwork that kind of reminds me of bohemian, like. I don't know if you, you call it bohemian, but it reminds me of what I want to decorate my home like. And mm -hmm. I'm like, and, and it finally, I was telling Amy, like, I finally know how I want to write this sales page and the art. And when I write copy, I have to design something first for the copy to flow. Yeah. And so I found finding these, this artwork to use on my Instagram, on my sales page, it was tied to, I realized it was tied to all of this discovery I was doing with what, how I wanted to decorate my home. And now I've, I've been able to create the sales page without even trying hard to do it. And it's beautiful. I love it. And it's like, it's all connected. It was like mm. me kind of taking the time to just chill out and watch all these YouTube videos about how to decorate my home ended up weaving into my business and the SOS club and rebranding and yeah feeling it's never really a on... waste actually if you just yeah. follow that curiosity or that um 
just something that you're being called to do. There's a part mm-hmm. of you that's just like, I want to choose some new cushions. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I need to make a sense <laughs> right, right now. It's like, well, but sometimes it can kind of <laughs> feed. Yeah, and that's the thing I said earlier. How I put sales page on my November goals, and it just wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. I had to watch a hundred YouTube videos about interior <laughs> decorating <laughs> first. <laughs> now that I'm looking back, in order to write the sales page, so there you go. There sometimes you, go. you just gotta. You know, if something's not happening, it's because you kind of have to allow yourself to do what you actually feel like doing. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up being part of the energy you need to create the thing you wrote down, the thing you want to do. Yes, it is like sometimes doing those tasks is the energy regeneration that you need, that the creative energy regeneration that you need. I also had something similar when I I took a break in the summer from from all the freelancing <laughs> and I was trying to hold it in but <laughs> the water went down okay. the wrong pipe <laughs> oh no water went down the wrong pipe <clears throat> I'm good I'm good <laughs> you did good holding it in for <laughs> okay. a moment though <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay you, so- you are you okay now yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> so yeah, in the summer, I was, I was taking a break and I just, I thought to myself, right, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to make my printables like right away. And mm-hmm. I just couldn't think of anything. I was just like blank, mm-hmm. total block because I was still really burnt out and tired. Yeah. And, and this is after you created so many beautiful, amazing printables. So it's not like, oh, if you only figure out how to make your own printables and your style and blah, 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 then you're set. It's like, you're still going to go through seasons where you yeah. feel just like a beginner would when they mm-hmm. first start to try to open up a store. Oh yeah, totally. There were definite um, imposter moments where I was just like, I should know how to do this. What's wrong with me? But um, I decided, okay, I'm just going to, whatever. I'm going to stop being annoyed at myself for this. What do I feel compelled to do? And something was that I really wanted to do was to start tending to the house a bit more. So mm. um, we'd done a massive declutter in the, at the beginning of the year, end of the previous year. And it it was like a blank space, but there were still like holes in the wall from the shelves that I had taken off. And uh, there were just a bunch of things that we needed to do. So we did that. Like we, I got, my sister came over as well and, and, uh, and my dad and we like filled things and painted things furiously. (laughs) And then I decided, right, it's time to get in some nice plants and some nice cushions and a a couple of new lights I'm gonna allow myself to do that and at the time I was like you should really be working this is a waste of time but (laughs) it helped me to get clarity on how I want the next phase of my life to feel yeah so I noticed okay I'm really attracted to colors and patterns and lots of monochrome black and white with like pops of bright colors and lots of textures I started to allow more of that into my life. And a few months later, it's, it's, it started trickling into artwork that I was creating for Planigal magazine mm-hmm. and then into my own paintings and then realizing, oh, okay, I want to shift from time management over to creativity mm-hmm. because that's where I'm interested. And then that led to, oh, okay, next it's, it's to to fill out this area of life that's got the art label on it that I've just been, I've just sort of left to do its thing. And so it it does all feed in, but it doesn't necessarily Mm -hmm. look the way you think it's going to look. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I mean, where it's not like for 18 months, you need to be on your Etsy store every single day. It's like, no, for 18 months, you need to carry the intention, keep the faith Mm -hmm. and keep moving forward with your life. Yes. Even if that means you're filling holes in your wall yeah. or watching <laughs> inspiring YouTube videos, it mm-hmm. all ends up adding up. So yes, yeah. Indeed. 18 months. I'm amazed. 18 months and we're here now. We're mm-hmm. still doing the Shannon Amy show. Which is yeah. Great. And it's the it's like coming to fruition. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for the next 18 months. Now it's time for the next. Yes. <laughs> okay, so is that 
all the questions that we had for today. Yes, we did it. I don't know if we took an hour or what, but we did it. Who knows? It's a great show. We always love a very concise videos. hour. <laughs> yeah. All right. We hope you guys got value out of this. Let Wait, us know in the comments. We should ask a question. Um, hmm. The question oh, is... Maybe it's a nice moment for reflection. Like, oh, yes. So the, the question of will it take 18 months, we are not sure what will happen in the next 18 months, but we could look back 18 months yeah. ago. So Remember when, when we started this show, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just so excited. Okay. Remember when we started this show and I was like, let's see where we are 18 months from now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh I just got shivers. I remember that. Like no. I, when I commit to doing something, I'm signing up for 18 months mm -hmm. and I'm not, I don't have any expectations. I'm not trying to be perfectly like we've taken breaks. We've like, but we still are still here. We still love doing this. We still want to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's 18 months later. And now we are working together in the SOS club yeah. and we had no plans of b doing this when we started this show. No, it's true. Like we didn't know what we wanted the show to be and the show t brought about what it needed to be. And here we are. So back to you, Amy. What was I saying? If you remember. <laughs> if you can remember. Oh, okay, the question. Okay. So take a moment and think back to 18 months ago. And think about where you were then and, and what you were thinking about, maybe what skills you were using in your life at that time. Uh, and, and think about what you have, what you've created for yourself over the last 18 months. Like really take stock of that. Because if we don't do that, then we just feel like we're moving in circles and not making any progress. But you have, you'll be surprised at how much yeah. you, you've brought to life in the last 18 months. And if you could just let us know, like the, maybe one of those things that you're super proud of in the comments below, then we can high five you and, and let's all celebrate each other's achievements. Yeah, we'd love to hear it. And I think 18 months helps people take the pressure off. Mm -hmm. because you, have, it's, you don't have a choice. You have to give yourself time. Like yes. you stop assuming like it should happen now. No, it should like take at least 18 months mm -hmm. and then it allows you as well like Amy was saying to look back and see where you were 18 months ago because mm. if you don't have a container to look back to you might be tr looking back too long or too short and not really seeing what actually happened like mm -hmm. in the moment you might be like I'm still not where I want to be but if you look back 18 months you're like wow look at that yeah yeah Amazing. Okay. Thank you everybody for listening. Uh, let us know your proudest thing in the comments below so we can high five you and we will see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Next week because next we week. are, we are getting consistent with this again. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bye. Bye.